Hello, this is Steve. It's a nice rainy day here in Southern Illinois and a little chilly, but uh, it's a good day. So I want to start out with a story. Vivian and I, when we were in college, both of us were working students. Um, and one of the jobs that we worked at was uh, providing staffing for summer camps for children. And one of the highlights of every week at camp was the canoe trip. So in the morning, uh, all, the, all of the campers and most of the students would uh, traipse down to the lakeside and that there we would uh, don our life preservers and pick up our paddles and then it was out onto the dock to load into the canoes. Now, those of us who were experienced canoers, that wasn't too, too anxiety provoking, but for people who were not used to canoes, it could be a little unsettling. So, it, you know, a canoe is, is floating on the water. It's not anchored. It's not steady. And as soon as you put your foot into a canoe, it, it starts to want to skitter and shift and slide. Well, <clears throat> one day, there was this fine, young, strapping man. He was one of those, you know, one of those guys that are just the ideal of the adolescent male and... It happened to be youth camp week, so there were a lot of campers who were only a year or two younger than him, and many of them happened to be attractive young females who, who uh, had become admirers of his already through the week. So he was uh, out there on the dock getting ready to load up the canoe, and one of his admirers had asked to ride in the canoe with him. And uh, he was, he was uh, doing his best to impress her with his prowess on the water and at the same time prove that he was still a chivalrous, chivalrous male. So uh, uh, when it came time for him to help her into the canoe, he stepped down and put one foot in the canoe, kept the other one up on the dock, and then put out his hand to her and very gentlemanly, very courteously offered to help her into the canoe. And as he did so, and she started leaning down to put her foot into the canoe, his weight shifted. And as his weight shifted, all of a sudden, the canoe started sliding away from the dock further and further and you could see see the tension develop in his face as he he tries to pull his legs together to pull the canoe back towards the dock but it just won't come and further and further and further and by this point the lovely lady realizes her foot can't reach the canoe and pretty soon she's clinging to his arm hanging over the over the water and then her arms are around his neck and the canoe slides further and further and splash they they fall down into the water in this tangle of arms and legs and spluttering okay now it didn't help that as she accepted his hand she looked at him and she said you know i don't want to get my hair wet today the entire dock erupted in laughter and here's this poor girl in the water dunked here's this poor young man just absolutely embarrassed he helped her back up on the dock and then as he is clambering up she turned on him and she said i told you i didn't want my hair to get wet so what does this have to do with spirituality this week I've had time on my hands, uh, as most of you have, and uh, I've used that on a project I've been working on for a good while now, uh, tracing Vivian's relatives uh, back in time and then out to the cousins. And I'm working on the fourth cousins now. That's, that's people that are related to her four generations back and then coming down the tree. And this week I was reading in the Federal Registry 
That's the diary of the U.S. Congress. Uh, you would think I'd be able to find something more interesting to read online, but what I was doing, I was, I was looking for the name of one of her relatives in the Federal Registry, because at least up until the 1960s, every postmaster in the United States was presented every year to the U.S. Congress for acclamation. They weren't really approving them, but they were acclaiming them as postmasters. And as I was reading down this list looking for her relative's name, uh, my eyes wandered and I happened to stumble onto the opening prayer for that session of Congress. This was back in the 1950s sometime. And, and part of that prayer just grabbed my attention. It went something like this, O oh Lord, we thank you for our dual nature. We thank you that we are not simply flesh and bones, that you breathed into us the spirit of life, that we are both men of spirit and men of body. And, and that just kind of caught me off guard because I've never thought of men having, or women, or humans, having a dual nature. We talk about Christ having a dual nature, being divine and human. I hadn't thought about humans having a dual nature, both spirit and physical. But as I thought about it, it struck me, you know, when we talk about being spiritual but not religious, or when we talk about being spiritual and religious, we basically are acknowledging that very fact. And so this is really common ground for those of us who say we're spiritual and those of us who say we're religious. As I talk, thought about it further, I realized that in my life personally, this concept of a dual nature actually has, provides both strengths and potential weaknesses. Uh, one, um, because I believe in a dual nature of man, um, I believe I live within the context of eternity. I expect life to go on after death. And that, for me, is a strength because it, it uh, prevents me from having a lot of angst and anxiety about the now, about the moment now, because I know there will always be a tomorrow. It may not be at all the tomorrow that I expect. It may be very different from today, but there will be a tomorrow. That's a strength for me. Another aspect that comes about as a, as a corollary to that is generosity. Because I live within the context of eternity, it's very easy for me to be generous with time. And that generosity spills over from time to the rest of my life. How I use my gifts, how I use the opportunities that I face in life how I use the things that are in my life. I view that as a strength, and it's not just me. Generosity is one of the key elements that helps us to be resilient in times of crisis. But the dual nature is also a weakness in some aspects, because how do you find the balance between being spiritual and being physical? What do I mean? Okay, I get up in the morning. Do I charge into my to-do list for today? Um, getting the garden ready, uh, raking up the gumballs, uh, getting the schedule ready for for the doctors that I that I coordinate, uh, researching COVID. All of these elements that deal with the physical world around me, or do I instead spend time on spiritual things, Bible study, prayer, meditation? 
I have to make that choice every day. And for me, as a person who's been dealing with chronic fatigue syndrome for almost 20 years, that's a real choice because I don't always have energy to do everything that I want to do. And when my mind starts getting sluggish, I often I can't do anything in terms of the, the planning and the thinking aspects. Which is more important, the physical or the spiritual? You see this tension played out in people's lives regardless of their orientation. So we have, have stories of, of Christian hermits who, who would starve themselves almost literally to death uh, in an attempt to deny the physical so that they could experience the spiritual. And it's not just Christians that go down that path. Um, when you see business owners who treat their employees as if they are just objects to be used and yet go to church, that tension between am I dealing with the spiritual or the physical becomes evident. When we see activists um, uh, sabotaging uh, medical research uh, labs uh, because they're using animals to research how to treat human diseases, the tension between our physical and spiritual is evident. You can come up with other examples of it, okay? For me, this is, this is, this is a, a part of this concept of dual nature that we as humans have to pay close attention to. Uh, otherwise, we end up like uh, the young gentleman in my story with one foot on the dock and one foot on the canoe, two different worlds that we're straddling and we end up doing the splits. In the end, though, I think it's worth it. I think being spiritual adds real value to my life and opens up the, the avenues for generosity, for compassion, for altruism, that if I lived simply in a physical world where the spiritual was not a consideration um, I don't know who I would be or what I would be so those are some of the thoughts that came up with uh, with for me this week as I've been thinking about what it means to be spiritual and religious what does it mean for you what strengths do you find from your spirituality do you find any challenges that are introduced into your life because of that? That's all I have to share today. Be safe, be prudent, but above all, look up. Have a good day.